Hello everyone and welcome back to 10 years of Minecraft. I'd like to apologize in advance, I've been filming my last couple days. As always, I've been trying to set up some stuff so I can celebrate the fact that I finally hit 150 followers on YouTube. Apologize for the fan, it's very humid today, I cannot have it off, I'll get sick. Um, okay, last time we ended off, we finished the four main areas. And then we were going to go look at in between. Okay, this doesn't really have an in between on this side, I don't think. Cool. Due to the fact the the biome thing is so large. So let's go through the biome area. Let's just continue this direction. There's that little area that I go up, so I don't actually trigger anything. Oh no, where was that? To the biome area. That's one of the apple areas. We'll go to that later. We get a nice view of all this stuff too, flying like this. I'm pretty sure I've been to every area. What is this? Was this the puzzle area? This area is not open. The reason I'm seeing any creative because I have to go further, faster. Oh, I thought I had been to all the areas. Looks like I was wrong. Headed to the mob garden. You'll need to solve the riddle of the eggs first. Three of the eggs contain levers which will open the gate to the mob garden. It's up to you to find out which chair the food to keep started. Play a jingle and I'll flap and wingle, but don't feed me chocolate for my kind. It's chocolate. That's a dog. Roses are red, velvets are blue. Give me a hug and I'll hug you back. Boom. Um, Creeper. You travel in haunting that are most certainly daunting. These tall traps will disappear and snap, and that's a new thing. Okay. I'm not. Off the top of my head, I don't remember what all the eggs look like. I think this is a villager egg. Um, the problem is the blocks themselves. What is this one? This one? Ugh, okay, come on. I think the Hinderman egg actually is purple. But I don't think it's this one. It has purple in it. Um, I know the creeper one is green. So they're empty if they don't have anything in Maybe this one? This might be the new turtle egg. Because there's a couple of different green ones. Let's just try to find the creeper egg first. So this one, I know it's got green in it. That's all I remember. Here we go. Alright. I am not flying. I wasn't flying. It's just still registered me as playing though. What one was that? I'm pretty sure that hold on. Why is my skin like that? I was playing around with the stuff. Hold on. Yeah, it's black and green. This one. Which one is that one? Which one is the green and blue one? Right. Okay, I think it should be in. It should have been in that one. Um, there we go. It was a parry. Chocolate deadly to parrots because I know it's deadly to dogs. Okay, I was at least right about this one. Alright. I'm not sure which one I got wrong. There's either one or three. Okay. 
What does an Enderman egg look like? About completely black. Is I already in the completely black one though? No, this one's completely black. Unless this one's supposed to be the uh, Ender Dragon. Yeah, what's already in here? Ooh, it's so dark, I can't see anything. Okay, I'm obviously wrong about something. Disappear and stop. Those are that's Ender Dragon. Unless it's this one. I've already been in this one. Maybe this one? Because no. the other one was a parrot when I heard, and the only thing it could have been was for the chocolate. So, oh, over here, let's show you something. There you go. I did not realize that par parrots were couldn't eat chocolate. Mob riddle solved. I'm definitely staying in credit for this one. I do not want to die to a creeper or something. Then I move a lot faster. Let's back to the vault. The outside area. Look how big they are! Okay, at least I got a bit of reading. I don't want to cut that. Uh, the dreaded sound of a creeper has seen behind you. Chew the dinner and say, Creeper will silently creep up next to an unexpected player before his keeps floating. Naturally spawning in the overworld, these iconic mobs drop zero to two gunpowder when killed. However, a creeper is killed by a skeleton or stray, it will drop a random music disc. If a creeper is struck by a lightning, it becomes a charge amplifier is charge creeper amplifier applying the explosion power. Okay. But it is new. He's so big. Alright, let's stick to this side for now and go around. Zombie villagers are variants of zombies that spawn in the overworld. They have the same attributes of characters character. Characteristics of normal zombies. However, unlike their zombie relatives, they can be cured. To cure a zombie villager, you must use a regular gum and apple on it while it's under the effects of weakness. The process is not intimate, immediate, so it is a very good idea to keep them safely locked away while they are converting. If there are iron bars or beds near the zombie villager, it will speed up the conversion process. Zombies and zombie villagers are capable of infecting villagers instead of killing them. We killed zombie villagers while they drop zero to two raw flesh. They also have a rare chance of dropping iron man, scarf, and potatoes and other natural and spawning equipment. Ooh. Look at me. Oh, I'm on this. You freak me out a little bit. Um, let's do a bitch first. Witches are hostile mobs that spawn individually in the overworld. You can always find a witch inside a witch hut. Alternatively, if lightning strikes within four blocks of the villager, the villager will transform into a witch. Witches use splash potions both offensively and defensively. To attack, they throw splash potions of slowness, poison, and weakness. To defend, they will drink potions of healing, water, breathing, fire resistance, and swift swiftness as required. When killed, witches can drop sticks as well as a number of useful potion ingredients, including glass bottles, glowstone, dust, Gunpowder, redstone dust, spider eyes, and sugar. They also have a rare chance of dropping their defensive potions if they are killed by drinking one. So you have to kill a witch while she's drinking her potion to get the potion. You gonna look at me? You gonna look at Goku? Hello. That's the biggest silver fish I've ever seen. Silverfish lurk in the infested blocks so that are generated strongholds and glues. In the mansions and mountain biomes, they will also spawn from the monster spawners located in the end portal rooms of strongholds. When they are attacked, silver will call out to other nearby silverfish and they will leave their infested blocks to help spawn the attacker. However, if they are idle, silverfish will re enter stone blocks and the variants, converting them into the respective infested blocks. 
We killed Silver Drop 5. They're so annoying. I wish they dropped something else. He's so cute. Something that's so annoying is cute. Okay, take his box. Must be on the other side. I'll wait. Shulker. Shulkers are diable box shaped hostile mobs that are found in NC. Shulkers are capable of teleporting if not attached to a suitable solid block. They will open their shells for a few seconds to play around. If it spots a target, will open the shell fully and shoot it. Guided projectiles that will follow the player. These projectiles can be destroyed with a sword or arrow, but if the attacks land, they will deal damage and collect the levitation status after 10 seconds. When a shulker's shell is closed, its armor is increased from 0 to 20 and able to collect all arrows. When killed, shulkers will have a 50% chance to drop a shulker's shell. However, as they do not respawn, shulker shells are a limited resource. Oh, yeah. There you go. Don't peek out again. I see you. Oh, well, you're facing me the other way. Come on. I saw you. Okay. Magnum Cubes are bouncy hostile mobs that spawn exclusively in the nether. They are immune to fall damage, and as other nether mobs, they do not take damage from fire or lava. Similar to slimes, Magnum Cubes will save to 1 to 4 Magnum Cubes at the smaller sides when they die. Both the small and large variants of Magnum Cubes have 25% chance of dropping Magnum Cream when they are killed. Another unknown fact, there's some versions of Minecraft that they are unkillable. Hello? You have a very big skeleton. You have a very tiny ball. <laughs> Sorry about that. I think my mom just came home. Spooky, scary skeletons. Skeletons are common undead hostile mobs for the bugs. They must spawn almost anywhere in the upper lower bar as long as the light level is 7 or less. Sorry. They can also spawn in places of wither skeletons in the nether or from naturally generating spawner 7 dungeons. They will burn instead of sunlight. When killed, skeletons drop 0 to 2 bones and 0 to 2 arrows. They will drop any equipment they have picked up, and they also have a rare chance of dropping their naturally used spawning equipment. Uh. Hello. Skeleton horsemen are a skeleton variant that only be spawned from skeleton traps. Skeleton traps are created from a fraction of lightning strikes during a thunderstorm, and their spawn rate depends on their difficulty settings. If a player comes within 10 blocks of a skeleton trap horse, lightning will strike it and will spawn a skeleton horseman on top of the skeleton horse. We spawn three additional skeleton horsemen, horse and horsemen in the vicinity. Each skeleton horseman is grouped with an enchanted iron helmet and an enchanted bow. The enchantment levels will increase as the difficulty settings are increased. Skeleton horsemen share the same drops and drop rates as normal skeletons. I hate these guys. I joined three different servers, multiplayer servers, and then with 10 minutes of all three of these servers, I had this happen, that, 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 that happened to me, where a skeleton horse spawned next to me and they got struck by lightning. I have bad luck. What's that girly sound? Drown are common zombie variants that are spawned in the water. They also be created when a zombie drowns. Drown have a chance to spawn with a trident, fishing rod, or not a shell. We kill drown drop zero to two zombie fly zero to one build down gets in their not a shell if they are holy one. If they are, they also have a rare chance of dropping the trident, which is extremely rare. Alright. I do I like his colors. They're just perfect. That is the biggest gas ever. It's even bigger than the one in the Twilight Forest. Okay, we're looking at the Phantom first, it looks like. If you've forgotten to sleep for three in-game games, you will get a shark. Swarms of phantoms that will swoop down and attack. Phantoms are undead hostile mobs that spawn you overboard at night or during thunderstorms. Lucky like other undead creatures, they will burn in sunlight and kill. Phantoms drop zero or to one phantom membrane, which can be used to repair the light tricks. Okay. Okay. 
Yeah, yeah, so where do we have to this next? I wish they would turn their face. Okay, hey, yo. Blazes are hostile modes that spawn for spawners in Nether Fortune. Able to shoot three, three fireballs up to 16 blocks away. Blazers are dangerous creatures. They attack in rounds every five seconds. If you're hit by a fireball, you will be set fire. Ouch. Fire resistance will negate this effect, and shields are capable of reflecting fireballs. If you are on at least normal difficulty, blazes are also able to perform melee attacks. Blazes will fly to follow their targets. However, when they do not have a target to attack, they will sink slowly until they reach the ground where they will hover. While they are immune to fire and lava, blazes cannot take da can take damage from water. They are the only one capable of taking damage from snowballs. When killed, blazes drop 0 to 1 blaze rods. Okay. Alright. Let's head over here. Did you hear that? It's the eerie cry of the gas. Gas are huge, fine, hostile monsters spawn in the weather. If they have a light of sight to the player, they will shoot explosive fireballs up to 100 blocks away. Time correctly, player can deflect the fireballs using the gas attacks against it. We killed gas drops 0 to 1 gas tears and 0 to 2 gunpowder. Another uh, fact that's very popular is that their sound is a cat. But yeah, it's, it's from a cat. It's weird. Hello. I'm sorry, scared to even try to go with this rifle with these guys. Yikes, yeah, so what was that sound? The wither is an undead mob bo boss mob that can be summoned by players. It is created by placing four blocks of cell sand in a T shape, placing three weather cell skull skulls on top. Be careful, when spawn the wither is invulnerable. It becomes vulnerable after 10 seconds, but it will create a very large explosion. They could deal up to 68 hearts of damage to nearby flocks, players, and mobs. Explosion is accompanied by a loud, terrifying sound that can be heard from across the entire map. The Wither Fire's explosive projectiles called Wither Skulls. If a player or mob is struck by a Wither Skull, it will affect the Wither, it will affect the wither effect. The Wither has 300 to 600 health. When it drops below half health, it obeys Wither Armor, becoming immune to projectile damage. On bedrock edition, when it reaches half health, it will spawn multiple riddles. Sorry, wither skeletons dashing towards its target and begin firing more wither skulls. The wither is immune to fire, lava, and drowning damage. It also cannot be suffocated as it breaks any block that it touches. When killed, the wither will drop another star at 50 exper experience. Okay. Another thing about the wither is you have to make sure there are no blocks touching the sides or the top of it. When you place it down, or it looks bad. Hello, cube. Ooh, evokers are spell casting illager mobs that spawn with the mansions. Evokers have two main attack spells bang attacks and summoning vexes. They are not in combat. They have a sh sheep color conversion spell that will change the color when nearby blue sheep to red. When killed, evokers drop one totem on the dying and zero to one ember. They will not respawn after they are killed. I knew about the blue sheep back. It's a very rare thing, and it's very hard to get them to do it because they start to attack you on command when you're near them. Plus, are dried out variants. The zombies that spawn in desert mines replace 80% of normal zombies. But they behave the same as normal zombies. They will not burn in sunlight, and their attacks apply the hunger effect to any players or mobs they strike. Husk grounds of water will be converted to a normal zombie. When killed, husk drops 0 to 2 rotten flesh in any items they are have picked up. They also have a rare chance of dropping iron and its carrots, potatoes, and any other naturally spawning equipment. Y'all aren't going anymore in the daytime. Strays. Strays are rare skeletons that only spawn in the icy biomes of the overworld. Strays shoot tipped arrows and fight 30 seconds of slowness on any targets they hit. Underwater, they opt for melee attacks that also inflict snow slowness. When killed, strays drop 0 to 2 bones, 0 to 2 arrows, and 0 to 1 arrow of slowness. They will drop any equipment they have picked up, and they also have a rare chance of dropping their naturally spawned. Hello, slimy boy. Slimes are bouncy hostile mobs that spawn in swamp lands. 
They will occasionally respond to the specific slide charts throughout the overworld below Y level 40 regardless of light levels. Slides cannot swim, so they will drown if they land in water. If a slime size is larger than one when it dies, it will split into two to four new slimes equivalent to its size divided by two. The slime size is one when it dies, no more slimes will spawn in, it will drop zero to two slimes. The smallest slimes can act deal damage when they attack, but this is not them from trying, and they're still adorable when I left them. Hello. 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 Welcome to the axe wielding maniac. Here's Johnny. <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't mean to do that. The negators are uh, ill germans that spawn during the duration of the dimensions. They are equipped with iron axes and they must point towards their targets. If you name a vill Vindicator Johnny with a name jack will compost drop most every mob. When killed, Vindicators can drop zero to one emeralds. They also have a rare chance of dro dropping their iron axe. They do not respawn after they have been killed. I heard about that too. I haven't seen anyone do it though. I might look that up after this because it sounds interesting. Guardians are hostile mobs that spawn underwater and ocean mobs. Aside from layers, guardians will also attack and kill squid. To fight the underwater creatures, they can survive indefinitely on water, simply flopping around. Guardians have two methods of attacks firing their lasers and a defense attack, similar to the Forens enchantment. When killed, they drop prismarine shards, raw cod, and preserving crystals. They'll have a rare chance of dropping in a random fish in addition to their normal loot. Y'all are annoying. Yeah, you heard me. You are even more annoying. The Ender Guardian is a stronger variant of the Guardian. The three Ender Guardians spawn naturally when ocean monuments are generated. They can be found in the wings and top rooms of the monument. They do not respawn. When killed, they can drop prisoner and shards, raw pod, preserving crystals, and smudge. They have a rare chance of dropping a random fish in addition to their normal loot. An Ender Elder Guardian has three methods of attack. Firing its laser, inflicting mining fatigue, which I hate, and a defensive attack similar to the Forge of Chocolate. Oops. Press Q instead of forward. Mother skeletons are black and sword dwelling variants of skeletons that spawn in other fortunes. They spawn in groups of up to five mobs. The attack of a wither skeleton inflicts players with wither's effect for 10 seconds. This turns a health more black and decreases the health by one heart every two seconds, the most poison effect. As with the other nether mobs, they do not take damage from fire or lava. And so, unlike regular skeletons, they will not burn in sunlight if they happen to be transported to the overworld. When killed, wither skeletons drop 0 to 2 miles and 0 to 1 gold. They also have a rare chance of dropping their equipment or wither skeleton skull. Okay. He's got a little sword, and he's red. There's nothing here. Inner medics. I think the inner mud escapes. Because he ain't here. Inner medics are the smallest hostile mob in Minecraft. They have a 5% chance of spawning with an inner pearl's throne. Inner men will also have to kill inner mites if, if they were spawned from inner pearls. We killed Endermites drop three experience orbs. I didn't know that Endermen didn't like the Endermites. Brains. Zombies are common undead hostile mobs that spawn in the overworld. They will burn in sunlight if a person zombie attacks a player while it is on fire. There's a chance to get also set its target on fire. On hard difficulty, zombies are capable of breaking down wooden doors to get to their targets. When killed, zombies will drop zero to rot flesh. They also have a rare chance of dropping iron ants, carrot containers, as well as their natural spawning equipment. There you go. This wing is done. I have no clue where the Enderman has escaped to. And that worries me that I'm just gonna come across it. <laughs> zombie Pig Man are common natural mobs that spawn in the nether. Found a zombie pig man in your basement. Zombie pig control fish and wander through nether quarters and never the overworld. You can also be created if lightning strikes the four blocks of a pig, all zombie pigmen spawn holding a golden sword which has a chance for being enchanted. On Halloween, zombie pigmen have a 
two, 22.5% chance of spawning with a car pumping or a 2.5% shoddy chance of spawning with a jack-o'-lantern on its head. Unable to draw the immune to fire damage, zombie pig men are harmless unless attacked. If one is attacked, all zombie pig men in that area will also become aggressive and attack the player as a horde. That is bad, especially when you accidentally hit them and you're just in new gear. They will return to their natural nature if you wait long enough to distance yourself from them. However, if you leave the nether, being like hostile to the zombie pigman will still be hostile when you return. When killed, zombie pigman drop 0 to 1 zombie flesh and 0 to 1 gold nuggets. There's a rare chance that they will drop a gold emit or their golden sword is hit. Yeah, that is like the worst thing ever if you actually hit one of those. Spiders are common neutral mobs that can climb mobs. They spawn in the overwearing groups of four in light of levels of seven or less. Spiders have a 25 chance to spawn from monster spawners found in underground dungeons. They will also spawn from monster spawners in the rare hidden rooms of relay matches. Light level is 11 or less. Spiders are hostile players and iron mobs. Otherwise, they will not attack unless provoked. When killed, spiders will drop zero to two strain. They also have a one in three chance of dropping a spider. There's also a chance that they could spawn with a skeleton on their backs, or skeleton spawn, riding one of them, it's, I don't know which way, it's which or the other. Endermen are tall, black, neutral mobs native to the end that have the ability to teleport. They commonly spawn in hauntings of four in the end. They can also spawn uncommonly in the overworld or mainly in the nether. They will take damage from water and rain. As a result, they will teleport frantically to escape. Endermen will also flee from projectiles, so you must attack them with a melee weapon. Endermen are passive unless they are attacked. However, do not make eye contact with Endermen. If you look directly at their body or head, Endermen will shriek, become aggressive, and run towards you to attack. If you feel that you must look at Endermen, toss a carved pumpkin on your head. Carved pumpkins will prevent you from provoking Endermen. As Endermen are three blocks tall, you will be out of the reach if you have a space that is only two blocks tall. When killed, Endermen drop 0 to 1 Ender Portals. The Enderman can pick up certain block types. If Enderman is holding block, then you skill will drop it as loot as well. Oops. You're pressing Q instead of W. That one's getting close to him, huh? Case spiders are small, venomous variants of spiders that spawn from monster spiders and man and mine chips. As with bad color spiders, cave spiders are only not neutral in daylight, and the light level is greater than 9. In the dark, they are naturally hostile. They can climb walls, be freely through, through crop webs, and are unaffected by poison. When a player takes damage from a cave spider, with effective poison effect, we can reduce a player's health to 1. When killed, cave spiders drop 0 to 2 strain. They also have a 1 in 3 chance of dropping a spider eye. These are natural enemies to any pipes and pukles and a hard mode. Like the one one life thing. Puppy. Wolves are natural neutral mobs that can be tamed. In job edition and legacy console edition, wolves spawn naturally in packs up to four normal horse tigers, giant tree tigers, and snowy tigers, along with all variants of those mobs, including fire form and flower forms. In bedrock edition, wolves only spawn naturally in tiger and snowy tiger mobs. Although they are neutral to players, wild wolves will attack and kill rabbit scuds and sheep. Baby turtles and baby turtles will approach uh, so foxes now. If a player attacks a wolf, it becomes hostile, being real. They are only hostile towards their attacker. All other wolves in the surrounding area will also become hostile. Wild wolves can be tamed by giving them bones. Tamed wolves gain a red color around their necks, which can be dyed. Unless a tame wolf has a pink hole to sit by his owner, it will attack anything that its owner attacks. However, they will not attack creepers, gas, or tamed horses. Standing tamed wolves will attack all nearby skeletons and skeleton variants. If the owner of a tamed wolf is attacked, the wolf will retire regardless whether it's standing or sitting. Tamed wolves can be killed by feeding them any raw or cursed meat, including fish. Rock flesh is also safe to feed them as they will not gain the hunger status effect. When killed by a player or another tamed wolf, a wolf will drop three experience. Dang it, I keep pressing Q. I don't want to talk about it. Hello, Mr. Polar Bear. Can I go? Right down. 
Polar bears are neutral mobs of spotted snowy tundra, snowy biomes, and ice spikes. They also be found in deep and regular flares and oceans. They are able to spawn on top of regular ice, but they're not packed ice or blue ice. Polar bear cubs are passive mobs. Adult polar bears are neutral, however, they will become hostile if a player gets too close to their cubs. If a cub is attacked, all darts within a 41 by 21 by 41 space will become hostile towards the attacker. When killed, adult polar bears have a 75% chance of dropping 0 to 2 raw thought, 25% dropping 0 to 2 raw semi. Even if the polar bear dies in the fire damage, the fish will still be raw. They only missed your lama. I wonder where this would look like if I tried to put carpet right here. I don't know what it would be like if it were the skeletons. Almonds are neutral mobs which can be tamed and used in tra to transmit large shipments of items. Almonds naturally spawn in savanna biomes and herds of up to four, and in mountain biomes and herds up to six. The dog llama can be tamed by attempting to ride it. It is necessary to tame a llama in order to breed it, give it equipment, or ride it without being thrown off. Even when it has been tamed, players cannot control the movement of a llama by riding it. However, you touch a lead to a llama, all llamas in the starting area will follow, creating a cavern. A cavern can have up to 10 llamas. Touching a lead to get another llama will create another cavern. Cavern. A cavern. I don't think I said that right. So many llamas. But what can you do with all these llamas? Llamas can be equipped with chests having, giving them 3, 6, 9, 12, or 15 slots of inferior space. Depending on their strength level. They can also wear decorative carpets. Two tame llamas can be great bred with hay bales. So the resulting baby llama will to take on their parents and turn them into parents. Sorry again. Strength level is randomly assigned relative to the strength of the stronger parent. Feeding a llama will restore its health, speed up the growth of baby llamas, and increase the temper of untamed llamas. They can be fed wheat and hay bales. Llamas are neutral, but if they are attacked by a player mob, they will split once daily and split once, dealing one damage. They are hostile to untamed wolves. When killed, adult llamas will drop two, zero to two leather. They will also drop anything that they had equipped along with their with all their items in their inventory. Let me have this again. I think the dolphin died, guys. Dolphins are neutral mobs that live in all ocean lands, excluding frozen oceans. Dolphins like swimming groups. They will even follow you leaping out of the water if you're crossing by the boat. Feeding dolphins raw cod will make them trust the player more to feed on the amount of fish fed. This will cause them to interact with the player more. When dolphins are fed raw cod or raw salmon, they will swim to the nearest chest and shipwreck or underwater rooms. Dolphins will start taking suffocation damage after it's been out of water for roughly two minutes. However, they cannot stay submerged for more than four minutes as they were going to drown. Be nice to dolphins. If you attack one, the entire pod of dolphins will retaliate, just like just like with zombie pigmen. When killed, dolphins drop zero to one rock cod. If they are killed by fire damage, they will drop cooked cod instead of rock cod. Oh. It would have been so cute if they had been. Especially with how large the other ones were. Is that puffer fish? <laughs> I would love to see it get big. Pufferfish are uncommon passive mobs found in lukewarm water and lukewarm oceans, and bedrock usually almost by more motion pipes. When killed, they would drop one pufferfish, or 5% chance they would also drop one bone meal on Java Edition, or a 25% chance they would drop one to two bones on bedrock and legacy console editions. If you use a water bucket on pufferfish, you can collect it and obtain a bucket of pufferfish. Pufferfish collected in place of buckets will just spawn naturally. Pufferfish collected in place with buckets will not despawn naturally. Sorry. Pufferfish, like other fish, cannot survive out of water. They will flop around before they suffocate to death. If a player drowned or any non water mob enters to the 5x5 five five space around the pufferfish, it will inflate and affect the player or mob with 7 seconds of poison. Touching them will deal damage on top of their poison damage. Excuse me, I'm gonna try something. Yum, yes. I only want one. Ah! He's in your space! Oh, 
So I got this wing left. I think next time we'll go look the apple areas. In fact, I think next time we'll do this because my voice is starting to go more so I'm in the video to record. So with that guys, please really like if you like comment if you should so for more we will go over this the rest of this area next time and we'll do that. Go look at the apple areas. I don't know if I'm gonna do them. Because the first area I had no clue how you were supposed to get out. There's no direction out. So that please leave a like if you like, comment if you wish, and so for more, I'm out people. Bye.